Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create and use custom presets. So let's say I was working on a clip on the timeline, and I came up with a cool color effect that I like. So it was a tint, and then let's say I mapped the white to be red, and I came up with this cool red lens effect. Now, if I wanted to use this on future projects or even other clips in the timeline without having to recreate this effect multiple times or copy and paste it, what I could do is turn it into a preset. And in order to do this, all you have to do is go to the effects control panel, highlight the clip that you want, and then choose the effects that you want to turn into presets. I can select just the tint, but if there was something about the opacity or blending modes that I also wanted to include, I would simply hold command and highlight those as well, or you can right click and select everything, but only do that if you also want all of these other parameters to be included each time. In this case, I just want the tint. So for this, I'm going to right click and then save preset. And this is going to open the save preset menu. So here you can give your preset a name like red lens. The type I'm going to come back to in just a couple seconds. This is for when you're doing keyframed presets. And the description is just simply if you want to include a quick description to explain to the user what this effect is. So once you've got it named, just press OK, and then you should see it pop up from now on in your presets effect folder. So here you can see red lens, and when I hover over it, I can also see the description I put in. It creates a red lens color using the tint video effect. So now I can just click and drag this onto other clips on the timeline like this, and you'll see it applies the same effects onto this clip as well. Now that's perfect for color effects and solid effects that are going to play throughout the duration of a clip, but let's go back and say that we were going to do an effect that involved keyframes and animated some portions of it. So let's add a keyframe by toggling the stopwatch on amount to tint, and then I'll start it at zero, and then I'm going to go to the middle of the clip, and then I'll set it to 100, and then I'm going to go to the end of the clip, and I'll set it back to zero. So now I've created a keyframe animation for it to slowly fade to red by the middle of the clip and then come back. Now when I right click and select save preset, we can take a look at this type of anchor point for the keyframes. So let's call this red glow. And in the type menu, this refers to how the keyframes are going to be placed onto different clips. Because you have to remember, each clip is not going to be the same length as the clip that you created the preset on. So scale will scale the keyframes in the same proportion as they are on this clip to any clip, no matter how short or long they are. So if you have one keyframe exactly at the start, one exactly at the middle, and one exactly at the end, it doesn't matter if this clip is twice as long. When we apply the preset onto it, it will scale things in that order. So if I press OK and then find that preset and apply it onto this clip, it won't matter that the clip is twice as long in length because it's going to scale the placement of the keyframes so that one's at the start, one's at the center, and then one's at the end in proportion to how we created it in the first one. Now let's say instead of scaling the keyframes, I'm going to show you what anchor to in point and anchor to out point mean and do. So I'm going to undo the animation of these and delete all that keyframe. And then let's say I just wanted to create a red glow at the very start of the clip that only lasts for five frames. So I'll add a keyframe at 100% at the very start of the clip. I'll go over one, two, three, four, five. I'll add another keyframe at 0%. So now we have an effect that only lasts five frames and fades in from red. Now if I right click and turn this into a preset and choose anchor to end point, that means no matter how long the clip is, it's going to last the first five frames of the clip. It's not going to take it proportionally or by percentage of how much this is compared to the clip. So if I create this preset and then I add this onto the longer clip, it still doesn't matter. It's only going to last for the first five frames. One, two, three, four, five. Even though five frames out of this first clip is larger in proportion than five frames out of this second clip, it's not going to make the effect last longer. The same concept applies to the third type that you can choose, which is anchor to out point. So let's say this time I started at 0%, and then I went to the end of the clip. I worked 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 frames back. And then at the end of the clip, I created a keyframe at 100. So that's going to make the last five frames of the clip 
burst into red. And then I right click and save this as a preset and anchor it to the out points. This is always gonna apply the effect on the last five frames of the clip rather than scaling it on the last percentage of the clip. So let's apply this red fade out preset to the end of this clip and then the red fade start preset to the start of the other one. And now you can see we've kind of created a red flashing transition just by thinking about how we should create these different presets. If you ever want to change things about a preset, you can right click on it and then go to the preset properties and scale the keyframes in a different way. And there's also built in presets in Premiere but these are your custom ones. And you can start to see how if you have the end result in mind, you can build these presets. So they're not exactly a one step click all the time, but you can save a lot of steps through using them. And it's kind of like having a frozen pizza. You still have to pop it in the oven and bake it into your edits and use it in a certain way. Maybe you'll have to use it in adjustment layers or make sure you trim your clips the right way before you apply the preset but sometimes it does save you from having to apply each of the individual effect parameters. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely leave a like on it below. Check out some of my transition tutorials so you can make the transitions and then kind of turn them into your own presets if you want. And stay tuned, I do plan on creating my own presets in the future. So subscribe for more videos, follow me on social media, stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time.